Today, I'm going to show you how to make this radish kimchi side salad. It's called buzhengche in Korean. If you are craving kimchi or gaktugi, radish kimchi, but you just don't have the time, well, buzhengche will do the trick for you. And it only takes minutes to make. And it will satisfy your kimchi craving. And guess what? It's refreshing and super, super addictive. Now, I'm also going to show you how to make busengche bibimbap. Busengche bibimbap is a must when you make busengche at home. And today's recipe also includes vegan friendly modifications as well. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Mm. Mm -mm. It's crunchy mm. and you have more of it with it. Mm. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. Modern Pepper is a Korean cooking channel that offers instructional Korean cooking lessons for authentic Korean recipes as well as Korean fusion recipes. So please do consider subscribing. 맛있는 한식 요리와 한식 퓨전 요리를 여러분들과 영어로 함께 하겠습니다. 구독 버튼 꼭 눌러주세요. Okay, to make our musengche, we need Korean radish. Now, for those of you who cannot get to a Korean market to buy Korean radish, you could substitute using Japanese radish called daikon, although it's not as sweet and watery and crunchy as Korean radish, but it's a good substitute. You could also use those hybrid radishes that come in all different colors, and you could also use these small round radishes that you could find at your local supermarket. We're gonna cut the ends off like so. And using a vegetable peeler, just peel off the sections that are a little bit bruised or brown, like so. And then trim around the base. And this green part is full of vitamins, so if it's clean and not damaged, just leave it as is. And then you see any holes like that, you just want to take a small paring knife and just go around it and remove it like so. So we're gonna use about a pound of Korean radish. So I'm gonna share a tip with you. You wanna take a sliver of the radish off from the side. And then you put it on this side, and this prevents it from rolling. So now it's stable, and we're going to just start cutting. So you want to cut it so that it's thicker than the spaghetti noodle, but not as fat as the linguine noodle. And then for the sliver slice we cut earlier, you just want to cut them like so. This one looks a little too thick, so just cut it down the middle. You want all the pieces to be about roughly the same size. So I prefer to cut, hand cut my radishes, but you could always use a mandolin if you like. We want it so that the consistency is about the similar thickness to the one that I hand cut. This is hand cut and this is mandolin. I like to stack mine into four or five pieces like this and just cut. So go slow, this is not a contest. You don't want to go fast and cut yourself and, and mess up your slicings. So one pound of Korean radish after you cut it will yield you this much.
Okay, quickly I'm going to go over some ingredients. Fish sauce. For many of you who are like, ooh, I don't like fish sauce because it must smell fishy. Um, although the name says fish sauce, it does not taste fishy at all. It is um, like a salty, concentrated taste of the sea, I would say. And it's such a great flavor enhancer. So do not be afraid. This is not a smelly, stinky fish sauce. It's totally the opposite. Now for my vegan friends, I have a recipe on how to make vegan quote unquote fish sauce. It's in my vegan kimchi recipe. Go there, check it out. If you could make yourself a small jar of vegan fish sauce, you could use it for so many things like for today's recipe, to make kimchi, to add as a flavor base for your soups and stews. So make this if you can. So check out that vegan kimchi recipe. Now for beshi chong, this is plum extract syrup. It's sweet. It is not your Chinese plum sauce. Those are two different things. This is like a healthier version of a sweetener that we use for cooking. So if you could get a bottle of this, it's really highly recommended. After I open it, I store it in the refrigerator as I eat through it. This particular one is uh, been fermenting for three years and so you know some of them are a little bit cheaper if it's been fermenting for a year again personal choice and you could actually turn this into a drink add a little bit of this to cold water mix it up and it kind of tastes like kombucha but it's not as fermented so you could use uh, soda water and enjoy it with this too and during the winter months I have it as a hot drink with a little bit of lemon zest if you don't have measured chung, you could substitute using honey or just brown sugar. And as for seojat, which is salt fermented, like tiny, tiny baby shrimp, if you can't get this at a Korean market because you just don't live near one, you can make this at home. And I will have the homemade version of this recipe in today's blog. So make sure to go to the description box below or go to the website address that you see right here and you can make this at home as long as you have fresh shrimp and coarse salt. Very, very easy to make. For my vegan friends, again, make sure to check out my vegan kimchi recipe because it also includes how to make the shrimp version using seaweed. So it's just, again, follow the same recipe. Just be gentle and kind of rub it like that. And then lift, kind of fold, lift. back in 15 minutes and taste it. All right, time to put these uh, disposable gloves on because I like to protect my hands since this is all acidic. We're just gonna mix it again. And the reason why I wanted to wait 15 minutes before we do our final taste test is see, now the radish has kind of wilted and it's also very bendy and there's a little bit of liquid on top because the radish draws out so much um, liquid. Oh, the smell is just so lovely, so lovely. Mm. <laughs> Garlicky, um, peppery, and tangy, and oh, it just, and then it kind of smells like saltiness. Um, I know it's kind of hard to describe. Okay, so let's have a taste test. Mm. For me, the saltiness is perfect and the sweetness is a subtle taste that I prefer. But if you like it a little bit more salty, you could add a little bit more fish sauce or just a little bit of salt. Um, you want it a little tangier. Some people like it a little bit extra tangy. Put a little bit of vinegar. I'm using brown rice vinegar, but any mild vinegar will do. 
you like it a little sweeter. I tend to not like it sweeter. Add a little more of plum extract or brown sugar or even honey. Mix it all up, so good. But for me, I like it the way this is tasting. So we're gonna put this in here. I want you to gently pack it down, like so, and then put your cover on it. This, if you want to have this for dinner and it's around lunchtime right now, I would let it sit on your kitchen counter for a couple hours until dinner time. But this actually tastes way better if you wait 24 hours. So keep it in the fridge. And then I want to show you the one that I made yesterday. So this has been in the refrigerator for 24 hours and already the smell is, um, it has a little bit of a strong uh, radish smell when you first open it, but that's normal. But the taste is different. So let's have a little taste of the one that's been fermenting for 24 hours. Mm. It's still crunchy, mm. and the spiciness is just perfect for me. You want to make this less spicy, just add very little gochukaru. This actually tastes sweeter than this, and I use the same exact ingredients, because Korean radish is known for that sweet, watery taste that it uh, releases as it ferments. So when it comes to plating, I like to make it kind of uh, like a mountain-like. Drizzle some sesame oil and some kesogum, roasted sesame seeds, like that, and it's ready. Boy, oh boy, this is gonna be so good as bibimbap. And yes, Musengche bibimbap is a classic bibimbap that people make at home all the time. You can't find it at restaurants, but let me show you how it's done. All right, to make our Musengche bibimbap, there's some Korean rice. I'm using brown rice and white rice. And you could put as little as you like, but I like a lot of it. So, and some of this Busengche juice right here. And some julienned lettuce. And an egg. Now for my vegan friends, Skip the eggs, obviously, and use avocado instead. Oh yeah, it's so good with avocado. And some toasted seaweed, kim. I'm gonna put in the center like that. And a little bit of sesame seeds like that. This is your easiest bibimbap you can make at home. That will hit the spot. Here we go. We're gonna start mixing. Gotta go in with the egg first. And I always like to add some sesame oil, changiram, before I start mixing everything up. Ooh la la, this is gonna be so good. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm, the fragrance of the sesame oil. Oh, with the buseng che is such a nice, uh, delicious smell. <laughs> okay, so you could also add gochujang at this point and mix it and make it spicier. All right, now it's time to taste. And this is my uh, famous mukbanger guest, James. Mm -hmm. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> and we didn't add the gochujang, but you can if you like, if you want to make it spicier, but because I'm sharing this with James, I'm not adding gochujang. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm -mm. It's crunchy. Mm. And 
you have more of it with it. Mm. Mm. It's slightly spicy, mm -hmm. and then the spiciness goes down once you have avocado. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the radish gives it that nice crunch. Yes, and the egg adds like this uh, nice creamy texture, mm -hmm. right? So yummy. All right, let's have one with just the avocado and no egg for our vegan friends. Mm. I know, adding avocado to bibimbap, oh boy. You never tried it, try it. All right, cheers one more time. Cheers. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, mmm, mmm. Creamy, mmm. Mm. Actually, I think a little bit of gochujang will make it super yummy. Mm. But it's probably too spicy for you, right? Yeah. All right, we're gonna add some gochujang, okay? I think you can handle it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So add a little bit of gochujang. Right here, like that. One spoon of more musangche juice. All right. Now with the gochujang, James, I think you could handle it. What do you think? Yeah, I can. I probably can. Oh, look, the color is different now. Mm, looks even more delicious. Now that we mixed everything, it just looks redder and it's so pretty. Mm. Go in, James. Go ahead, get a spoon. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's a big bite. I think I can do it, right? Bon appetit! Mm. Mm. It's uh, more spicy and it's still good. I love it. Mm. I love it. I love it. Gochujang just made it uh, so good. <laughs> Maybe a little spicy for you, but for me, oh, so good. All right. We're gonna have to say goodbye here because we're just gonna eat all of this. All right, just keep on drinking your whole water. <laughs> I wanna thank everyone for watching today. And if you enjoyed watching today's video, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would click on that thumbs up icon and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet, right? Yarobun, onu jemike bojasunan ko joanu patu nulojuseo kamsamida. All right, it's getting a little spicy in here. Oh, uh, starting to sweat. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys in my next video that you see right here.